Hello, this is Epi Zeldord12345 and welcome back to Let's Play Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. Last time we took down Oogie Boogie here in Halloween Town, and now we have some mushrooms to take care of. Actually, I shouldn't have cast Blizzard on that one. And I missed that one. Well, this has been bad luck. But yeah, these guys are going to be requesting arrows, so let's give it to them. Yep, keep on spinning. I would put in a certain song in here, but I really don't want my videos to be taken down. That's happened quite a few times, actually. I wanted to put in a song or a movie clip just for a joke, but unfortunately, due to how YouTube's copyright works, I really don't want to risk it. Technically, I already did risk it once with that young Frankenstein clip a couple episodes ago. Anyway, there's our arrow arts. But other than that, I just think it's a bit too risky to do some things. To be honest, I'm surprised that that video hasn't received a copyright claim. Yeah, not even a claim. Ah, damn it. Okay, there's one left. Alright. Now, what do you want? Fire. Okay, now, as you can see, after I got the arrow arts, I'm not really going for anything specific. Well, I got a spirit shard, which is nice. But that's really because of how hard it is to farm gems from these guys. The chance of them dropping it is just too low for me to go out of my way for it. I've done it before, but it's too tedious. Like, just getting the white mushrooms to appear can be tedious, but try getting a gem from them. It's not fun. Okay, so after farming those white mushrooms, we now have all seven of the arts. So, let's talk to Marlin now that we have them. Thank you. Of course he would know just how broken magic is here. But yep, once you get all the arts and show them to Merlin, you get a dream shield for Goofy. As for what it does... The text lies. It says raises max MP by 2, but as you can see by the stats, it only raises it by 1. So yeah, that sucks. But I'm giving it to Goofy anyway, so that way he can use evolution more often. Because I find that to be much more valuable. And he does have it equipped, good. He does get another ability that requires his MP, which I will be using as well. But I'll worry about that later. Let's visit Winnie the Pooh again. Today's not really going to be too big of an episode. There's not much in the ways of side quests to do at the moment. But let's say go into this area. This is quite possibly the biggest uh, so, the biggest portion of the Hundred Acre Woods. Mainly because there's a lot to do here. As you will see. Well, Tigger is here and When do we earn this guy's name? Okay, let's join in. Alright. Huh, didn't know you were good at bouncing. Or, never mind. Unfortunately. Well. Alright. Can we move? There we go. Now this minigame's not really anything too bad. It's basically a test of your platform skills, but more of your memorization. Really this whole area is a test of your platform skills as you, you'll, you're gonna see soon enough. But this, it's not bad at all. 
Well, that's one down. Now we just gotta do that two more times. And thank you for constantly changing the camera angle. It's not too distorting, but I don't get why they did that there. You're going to want to focus on a, the a path that they make, so wouldn't it be better if you could see the entire area and take a look at what they're doing there? I don't know, it just seems like a much better idea than just zooming in on a certain point than moving to another. Alright then. Okay. Huh. Yeah, we can jump on the trees around here. And after that, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, let's jump on here. I have no idea how his weight is making us uh, go this high up. I guess that's the power of bouncing, I guess. There we go. And is that it? Okay, now we learn Rue's name. Alright. Um, what do you mean the big one? Ugh, this mini game. Where do I begin? Well, first off, we have to whack Tigger's nuts. That's one thing. Second off, this game is highly dependent on your positioning and your timing. Basically what's going to happen is Tigger's going to throw a nut out, and you need to whack it at the pot. However, the more, the higher it is from the ground, the more points you get. So you need to have really precise timing. So I'll go a little bit quiet here so you can see how exactly you should position yourself and when you should attack the nut. So hopefully this helps. That was bad. I forgot that you had to jump. Yeah, you have to hit with an aerial attack. Whoop, do not fall off. That will end the minigame. What? Hold on, what? How did I get 17 points right there? Yeah, that's the other thing about the game. I believe as you keep on advancing forward and keep on hitting more nuts in a row, then the amount of points you get increases. But I've never seen that happen before. It usually takes three or four hits at the very minimum for me to get that. But... Uh... I don't know what to say to that. I've never seen that happen before. The most I've gotten is 14 points from one hit, but that was 17. So, how exactly does that point system work? Beats me. So, really you just have to position yourself properly, then when a nut comes out, you lock on, onto him, and then you jump into an aerial. That's pretty much it. Now, as for the requirements for getting the awesome reward later on for all of these mini-games, you have to do it in under 30 seconds. As you can see, I totally got that down. Back when I was practicing this earlier today, I, it actually took me a couple of tries to, to get below 30 seconds. I was gonna say you have to do it perfectly, but honestly I'm not sure after what just happened. Anyway, let's talk to Owl. How the heck did that happen? I don't care about your nuts. If you're so knowledgeable, tell me how that happened. Hey, he's not gonna tell us. A shame. Thank you. And okay, I believe we need to talk to Tigger now. I'm not sure why he's over here. Yeah, now Zager and Rue are going to be at the seesaw, which we will need right now. 
Okay, I want Rue to be the partner. Basically, they can use the seesaw to help us get into certain trees. And these are the nuts that Owl was talking about. Basically, we take one of these back, and he gives us a reward for it. What the game doesn't tell you is that you can only carry one at a time. There is another nut right here, but you can't get it. So, why they place two nuts in the exact same area? Just to screw with you. I can't think of any other reason for it. But what does make up for this are the rewards you get for doing it. The rewards are really, really good. So, let's keep on hunting for them. And by hunting, I mean backtracking because stupid game design. Well, there's the other nut. And a defense up. Okay, our defense should definitely be higher than Donald's at this point. Even without the golem chains. Okay, now let's have Tigger be our partner. Okay, what to do from here? There are also some chests in this area, so I gotta look out for that. Let's see. There we go. There's a third nut. Once you get all the nuts, I don't think you can do the seesaw with them again. For some reason. I guess you don't really need to. There are other ways to get into the trees. But still... Don't really see much of a reason for him to just take it away like that. Uh, get on there. Yeah, high jump can always be a bit finicky. Yeah, imagine already having a nut and then trying to get that one, not understanding why you couldn't grab it. It's pretty annoying. Ah, an AP up. Thank you. You can never have too many of those. Alright, now let's put a greater focus on treasure hunting around here. Because there's quite a bit to find, if I can get up there. Let's see, let's climb up here. Yeah, there's quite a lot to explore in this place. I really like it. I really wish Kingdom Hearts 2 had this level of exploring, but unfortunately, Kingdom Hearts 2's level design is much more linear. A shame. And Mithril. Nothing too big, but it's there. Okay, now to get to that treasure chest up there. Yeah, I believe we need to use this. There we go. And another Mithril Shard. How many of those do I have? Fourteen. I want to say that's all the Mithril Shards you need in the game. But I'm not too sure. Okay, now this part's a little bit finicky. You have to jump in here, but... There's a bit of a wall here. I have no idea why this is. You are supposed to jump through here, but... Sometimes it just doesn't work. There we go. I'm not entirely sure how that jump was any different, but okay. And we get a shield too, gummy piece, which I think is good. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, is there anything else left to do here? Oh, I didn't get all the nuts. Which one am I missing? Ah, here it is. That actually took a little while for me to find. But I got it. Also, I was wrong. Tigger and Rue will still use the seesaw with you. I'm not entirely sure how, but I did get it. Eh, whatever. And thanks for the Orich Alchem. And why do you want all those nuts? Okay. You can keep your nuts to yourself. I'm normally not the kind of person to make so many yeah, dick jokes, but the game's kind of handing them to me. 
Man, we got a Mithril for clearing out those mini games. And that's pretty much it we can do here. Okay, so once you have the Dream Shield, Merlin actually doesn't take the art books from you. You get to keep them. However, they don't do anything else aside from getting us with the Dream Shield, so I'm gonna sell them now. We get a fair amount of money, so might as well do it, and I sold a shield by accident. I'm gonna be sticking with the Dream Shield from now on, so I don't care too much. And with that money, let's buy some potions. I could use some more. I do have to say it's a bit annoying how hey, the how your party members just drain your items so quickly. Well, that's bound to happen on Proud Mode, unfortunately. Okay, so before we end things off, we have some Ansem reports to look at. Unfortunately, I kind of forgot to look at the third one, but... Well, now that we have both the third and the seventh one, we might as well look at them now. So with that said, let's get started. The shadows that crawl beneath the castle. Are they the people who lost their hearts, or incarnations of darkness? Or something entirely beyond imagination? All my knowledge has provided no answer. One thing I am sure of is that they are entirely devoid of emotion. Perhaps further study will unlock the mysteries of the heart. Fortunately, there is no shortage of test samples. They are multiplying underground even as I write this report. They still need a name. Those who lack hearts. I will call them the Heartless. This is a bit of an interesting read. Basically, as you could tell, it focuses more on the Heartless themselves uh, instead of on Ansem. And it's kind of nice. And maybe it doesn't tell us too much than what we already know, but... It's still interesting to hear different point of views about the Heartless. Especially one saying that they might simply be incarnations of darkness. Well, we already know that that's not the case. With that said, let's move on to the seventh report. Quite a gap we have here. I am now studying material from the meteors that rained down that fateful night. What a find. The material is foreign to our world. It is elastic to the touch, and when two pieces are combined, they bond easily. None of the records I have scoured even mention such a substance. Was it introduced to this world when I opened the door? I wonder how many other such materials drift through the atmosphere of this tiny world. I wish I could soar off and find out. Could there be uncharted worlds up there? My curiosity never ceases to grow. But I should stop speaking of such unrealistic dreams. For now, there is no way to venture outside of this world. My people and I are all but prisoners of this tiny place. Well, the focus is back on Ansem as far as uh, these reports go. And obviously the most interesting is the part when he talks about opening a door. As I mentioned, there's a clear gap in between the 3rd and 7th report, so quite a lot has happened since then. It also shows uh, Ansem's curiosity, and uh, how much uh, he seems to be quite an explorer. It's kind of interesting. These reports do give a lot of character to him. Anyway, I think that's it for this episode. We haven't gotten too much done today, but... I'd rather have the start of the next Disney World in its own episode instead of sharing it with that of side quests. So next time on Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, we'll be heading to the last world of the second segment of Worlds. So see you next time.